Hi, and welcome back. So in this video, let's address specific commands to Windows Subsystem for Linux. So remember that we have a previous playlist where we go into details. So this video is specific to open phone installation. So here I already opened my Windows PowerShell. Remember that when you install Windows Subsystem Linux, you install this application where you can access everything. I know I don't want to go into details, just watch the videos or read the instructions of Windows Subsystem Linux installation. So the first, the, the most important command is WSL. Okay, and then help. I'm pretty much you have a very, I have to say, this is a very detailed help. So when you install Windows Assistant Linux, the files that are installed in a default directory. So you will in, you can install many versions, you can move those versions, you can export the versions and so on. So for instance, if you want to know what versions do you have, in my case, I have these versions. Okay. So we have been working with this one, I have another one that this is my personal version, and see that also I have this OpenSUSE Tumbleweed. This, that, this is another version of OpenSUSE, it's not the, the lead 15.5. This is a more uh, recent version, okay, that honestly, I don't recommend to use this one because it's too ahead in time. So sometimes the compilers are the newest versions and the application that you want to compile is still is using the old standard. So it will have compa compa uh, compatibility problems and open phone is one of is, is the case. So if you use the tumble with, it will be a little bit tricky to compile. So let's stay with the 15.5 or 15.6 or four that they're okay. So let's say that we are working with this version and to show you here that we just installed this one and I click there and it's going to launch a, the application and see that everything that we installed, we have it there and you can move those files. Big question is where is this version installed? How can I move this file? So here I have some basic commands. So for instance, if you want to know where it's installed, you have this command where all the versions that you have installed. Look at that, I have many Linux versions inside of my computer. I put it here and you have here a good summary. So the Tumbleweed you have it here and the latest one you have it here. So here as you go to this directory you are going to see the file where you have that virtual machine uh, image and then you can move it. So that will be the next question. How do I move that one? So you have export and import command. So the export command is this one. So look at that. You have, you give a name to the virtual machine. So when you run WSL LV, see that you have a name and also here you have that name. So basically it is asking what version do you want to export and where do you want to export that version and in what format? There are two formats. There is the, the, the zip format, the tar.gz, and then you have this one. I recommend you to use this one. It's a binary format. It's way much faster. So this is this is something that is relative, relatively new. So you need to have the latest update of Windows existing Linux. And actually, you need to have the version 2. So you have older version, you have this. Likely, you don't have this. So if you want to export it, you do this. So let's do it just to show you how to export. But what is important, let's run again LB. And okay, the version is not running, but it might happen that sometimes the version here, you have a state running. If it is raining, you need to stop it. Okay, so you have this command here, bit important. So I will put, I will use it even if it's not running to show you, but you have to be very careful. You need to stop that version to avoid problems. So when you are sure that the version is stopped, you can go here and export it. So here you give the path where you want to save. It can be anywhere, even an external hard drive or on the cloud, whatever. So 
type it there and it will do this this is an operation that kind of is moving that file it will be a little bit uh, it will take some time depending on the dimension of the file so so far this image is not big so see that we already move it and see that here data ws we have this the the image so here i have my personal images so you can put it whatever you want and this is the one that we exported so at this point this is a backup you can do whatever you you want with that version and to mention that this file that you have here by default the maximum dimension is one terabyte but that can be adjusted can be made you can make it smaller larger and i go into details go to the documentation or in previous videos we we, we address that so now the question is okay you export that and now you want to import it just to make it available because at this point it is not available anymore so we go here uh that version okay let me erase that version so is this one the, the last one so to erase windows tool it is on register and i can erase it i don't need it anymore because i already moved it i have my backup and you have to be very careful erase the version that you want to to erase sometimes you make a mistake you choose the wrong name and well you can lose that so see that it doesn't exist anymore and to show you again you can come here and let's see where do we have the version see that doesn't exist you only have the tumbleweed and then the other one that I haven't installed there. So now I need to import this version to make it available. So to import that version, this is the command. So basically it's very standard. You have import, you give it a name and then where do you want to save it? And where is the file? In this case, we're using this format. And that's it. So remember that also you have the help. And as you go to the help, you can see the steps here. So export distro file name and actions. So it's not a big deal. So let's do it. Let me go. Let me call it banana phone using my standard banana notation. And there you go. So this, if the directory doesn't exist, it will create it automatically. And basically it's just copying that file there and something interesting i want to mention that when you do this operation uh, i want to point out that this file where you are running and see that is renamed uh it is dynamically growing so if you are running simulations copying file this dimension will increase so it might happen that in, in one instance you reach a dimension and a state and then you start to erase file and this file will remain large and it can take a lot of space so if you want to compress that file the easiest way it is to export and re-import and when you re-import it will compress there is another technique it is a little bit more time consuming we addressed that in a previous video but i think this is the easiest one you just export it and re-import it and then you are going to compress everything in this case if I did it, it's the same size because I we don't have much information. But you will see that when you start to do things, uh the, those files become large. And if you want to save space, if you don't have enough space, you can do that. If you have a space, don't care. Like in my case, I have enough. So if I type now my minus LV, see that now it exists. Banana Susan. You have it there, and this is a proper uh linux installation now in windows subsystem so if i want to run it i go here type there and i'm going to launch my linux version something interesting that is going to happen let so the first time that you open it takes a time probably it's just uh, moving so it's creating so it's creating and so on so look at your prompt it, it is red for those linux users you might know that this is already telling you that you are logging as a the root user. So if I go who and I, I am the root. So the problem that when you move an image, 
it might happen that you are not logging anymore as the standard user when you created that image. You are now going to log in as a root user. So to fix this issue, it's very straightforward. And let me go back here to the documentation. You can read that in the documentation. And this will go in, in an auction that is advanced settings. So in advanced settings, you have this file. This file, it is in Linux in the directory Etsy. You will have this file wslconf, I will show you. And the only thing that you need to do there is just define your default user. So this is your issue that now here in our case is CFD and that's all. And you have many more options and to point out something as well that in Windows, you can have this file .wslconfig and here you can define also some, some options, some default options. So here, for instance, by default, Windows subsystem Linux will use all your resources, but if you want to limit the number of processors, maximum memory, uh, location of some files, whatever, here you can define that. If you don't put anything, it will use everything, all your resources and default options. So please take some time and read this. So we were talking that, okay, this might be an issue. How can I fix this problem? So I say that in Etsy or ETC, uh, you go here and see that you have this file. Uh, let's say WSL. So there should be a WSL file. I don't see it. Okay. So let me log in. Let me close here and let me do a second login because that file is created automatically. If it's not created, you can create it manually. So it's not a big deal. So let's see what happens. Okay. We didn't have the file here, so I can create it. WSL conf, put it there. And now I go jedit and let me modify this file. And here we just need to add this information. Let's verify that we have that. It is there. Okay. So I need to also define the user. So I know that the user is CFD. Let me, let's check now oh, sanity check. Okay. Everything. All right. WSLLB. It is running and now let's terminate. Banana Susie. Okay. Oops. So let me terminate it. So I terminate it means I stop everything. I didn't cancel. I just stop. And now let's do a clean restart. So I go here, Banana Susie. And there you go. Look at that. The prone now is white. And if I type who and I is CFD user. So this is a very important step. It will happen with any, uh, any virtual machine uh, that you install or Ubuntu, Shantos, whatever you put, you, you will have this issue that when you move it from the default location, it will log in as an, another user and look at that. All the files, all your installation, all your previous installation, you have it there. So now you can do some cleaning, moving. So I hope you get the point what we have done. So the final thing that I want to show you, well, nothing. So we did help how to show your virtual machines, how to stop a virtual machine when it's run, running, and then you can move, explore. Or, more, or do clean restart. If you want to know the location of those virtual machines, you have it here, how to export, how to import, and this is how to cancel that. We already did one cancel and how to erase it, just to put it properly. LB, and we want to cancel banana suicide, and that's also, as you put there, LB doesn't exist anymore. And this is what we need to add when you move Okay, in cases you are logging as the root or a different user, just add this and you will have it. So sometimes this file will be created automatically. Sometimes it will be, you are not going to have it, but you can create it manually. It's not a big deal. And everything, all those files, you're going to have it in the root. In this case, 
in banana is created automatically so that is a reset you can move it and that's it we these are the basic wsl commands i don't want to give you any more information because it's better for you to read these and point out also that wsl we are going to we're running using the terminal the terminal now this black window but if you want also you can install linux here and you can have access to the whole graphical user interface that like in vmware but honestly i think there is no need and actually i like to do like this i have vmware in vmware i have my whole installation graphical user interface here's where i do my, my whole development and then when i have everything ready to deploy i can go into production here in wsl just to take advantage better advantage of the resources because here i know that maybe here will be a little bit limited this is when i work in my computer of course if i'm using a cluster i don't care about this so this is all for this video i hope you you found it useful again a reminder we're using open source 15.5 and we're going to work with installation installation of open phone 11 and open phone 2306 okay thank you for your attention and do not forget to subscribe bye